one of our favorite topics, which is uh, thyroid. And thyroid, I would consider to be one of the most important metabolic hormones. It really does decline functionally in almost everybody after the age of 40. But what you're going to find is that any period in our life, and that little graph kind of shows from the teens all the way up, any period in time when you have stress or nutritional deficiency, the thyroid's going to go down. So somewhere in the teens when you're trying to figure out what to do in life, and somewhere in the 20s when you're trying to figure out what to do in life, and again in the 30s when you're trying to figure out what to do with your kids, and then in the 40s when you're trying to figure out what to do with your spouse, and <laughs> in the 50s when you're trying to figure out what you want to be again. So basically, all through our life, we're going to face periods of time when the thyroid goes up and the thyroid goes, comes down. And one of the reasons on top of the stress issue, why thyroid dysfunction is so common uh, in addition to stress, is because of things that are occurring in our environment these days. Probably the strongest thing is electromagnetic radiation. Electromagnetic radiation, as we sit in this room, uh, we're in a Wi-Fi zone, which we look for. And when our kids go to college, the standard question is, is the campus Wi-Fi internet wireless? Well, great, but think about the fact that those wi the wireless a signal is something which affects the sensitive organs and the sensitive cells in the body to a more extent than uh, otherwise. Actually, I have to break for a second because I think there was a very important question that needed to be asked. Okay, and, and actually having the handout is good, but I do want you to know that following along in this handout is not, a, not easy. So the best thing to do is pay attention here and you'll have the whole thing in the handout. Um, but electromagnetic radiation affects the thyroid, the alpha and delta brain waves, the ovaries, the testicles, and therefore it is going to affect those organs at low level. And you, you may be aware that even the University of Pittsburgh Medical School has now issued some warnings about cell phones already. So we know that's one of the big things that affects thyroid. But there's also other things like the bromine that's in our bread, the chlorine that's in our water. These are all halogen family. They displace iodine. They create more thyroid deficiency. Uh, many processed foods, uh, nutrient deficiency, zinc, selenium. Um, so there's lots of reasons why thyroid is uh, deficient. But let's look at some of the roles of thyroid. First of all, it has major effects on cellular metabolism. It activates brain and neurological function. It's responsible for cardiac contractile support. You have a patient with congestive heart failure, look at their thyroid. Um, you have a patient with atrial fibrillation, any kind of uh, arrhythmia of the heart, look at their thyroid. Uh, low thyroid causes palpitations and arrhythmias in AFib, and high thyroid causes palpitations, arrhythmias, and AFib. So when a patient comes in with palpitations, you can't say whether it's low or high. That's not, that, you know, that's not a contraindication to use it or to raise it. Um, we have osteoblastic support of the bone. There have been uh, reports of the TSH being suppressed too low, causing bone loss. And when people have looked carefully at those studies, what one finds is that um, the TSH, uh, actually the people who have a low thyroid are predisposed to having low bone in the first place because unless your thyroid is in the mid-level, the thyroid uh, activity and osteoblastic support isn't optimal. Um, menstrual cycle regulation, I haven't yet seen a patient who has um, cycle-related infertility that doesn't have a thyroid issue. And that's actually one of the reasons why the um, many patients who've gone through a lot of fertility treatment finally get on thyroid and they get pregnant and uh, very quickly because it actually regulates the cycles. Uh, but thyroid uh, 
actually activates all of the other hormonal receptors. So for example, your estrogen doesn't well work well unless the thyroid's working, and nor does your progesterone, nor does any of the other hormones. The major symptoms, these ones on this side you almost always find. Low energy, low mental clarity, memory, low focus and concentration, depression, low mood, low motivation. These are all sort of very, very common. Um, the weight gain, a lot of people have, but a lot of people don't have this. Weight gain is present in about 30 to 40 percent of people with thyroid issue, but not more than that. Dry hair, dry skin, cold hands, cold feet, hair loss, constipation, loss of the outer eyebrows, LDL elevation. It's a whole constellation of things. And when you start ringing this off, your patient's like, that's me, that's me. And of course, many of you sitting in the audience may be doing the same thing. Um, you know, we, we, we do that for almost all these hormones. There's always some overlap between them. But the major associated conditions are these, chronic fatigue, infertility, fibromyalgia, congestive heart failure, bone loss and osteoporosis, dementia for sure. Um, the indications, TSH less than 1.8, but more importantly, a free T3 under 450. Um, and the presence of any antibodies to the thyroid. You have antibodies to the thyroid, there's thyroid dysfunction, more or less. Um, as with other hormones, if the clinical picture fits thyroid dysfunction, the thyroid should be restored. Um, Specific nutrients that are critical to thyroid function include iodine, selenium, zinc, B12, ferritin, vitamin D, and uh, many other ones. The only fraction of thyroid that's active is the free T3. And if adrenal dysfunction is apparent, it does have to be addressed first, but as I was mentioning, just by putting them on a very strong, essential, multivitamin mineral and uh, basic uh, progesterone, your adrenal support is already on board so, um, so that you're no, you don't have to fear using thyroid. Uh, I do recommend using thyroid formulas that contain both T3 and T4 in slow release formulas. And I, I would recommend that you don't get too attached to any one form of thyroid. In other words, I don't always use armor, and I don't always use slow-release T3, T4, and I don't always not use Synthroid. If a patient comes in on Synthroid and they're happy with their Synthroid prescription, sometimes I'll only add T3 slow-release to it because T Synthroid is the T4 only. Um, and also you have to take into account that insurance issues dictate what people stay on. So even though we may practice extremely... This is the way it should be. Like, I, I would prefer somebody on a slow release T3, T4, but if armor is covered, armor is T3, T4. It also has T3 and T2 in it, and it's not slow release, which means you usually have to dose it a couple times a day, which is harder. But for some patients, they would prefer that and get it covered by their insurance. Um, let's see here. Uh, you always uh, ask people to take it on an empty stomach, and I ask people to keep it next to their bedside and keep a glass of water, and as soon as they open their eyes, take the thyroid. If they have to go back to bed, go back to bed, but after 30 minutes, they, it's a, there's a pretty good um, uh, absorption. The tablets do absorb better than the capsules, but not all compounding pharmacies make them, so it's something that you have to ask for. You can use, and I want to get to this question about sublingual trochies for thyroid, and somebody earlier asked about using sublingual trochies for testosterone. Um, you can always use them, but you cannot get a slow-release form, which means you, the, the problem with using a slow-release thyroid is that you get more cardiac arrhythmias because you get a very high peak, and then it goes away. And then again, after a couple hours, you peak, you peak again. So the palpitation rate is much higher. So I don't, I don't like to compound it and use it that way. Um, and testosterone, you can do it the same way, but with the same uh, disadvantage. You may get less DHT conversion uh, using it sublingually, but you are going to have um, the issue of uh, having to dose it several times a day. When we add iodine to a patient who's on thyroid, you never want to add iodine and increase thyroid at the same time. I